Welcome to the Korean Beauty Show, where we're talking all things Korean skincare, makeup, and more. If you want to learn about the hottest trending products and ingredients straight from South Korea, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, we'll be diving in to take a look at the latest trends and product releases with special guest interviews from the names behind the hottest Korean brands, as well as all the tips and tricks you need to perfect your K-beauty routine. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, professional K-beauty addict and founder of Korean beauty platform Style Story. Hi, KBs, and welcome back to The Korean Beauty Show. I'm Lauren Lee, and I'm excited to have you here with me again today as we explore all things K-beauty. If this is your first time listening to The Korean Beauty Show, then welcome. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, and I've spent the last 10 years living and breathing all things K-beauty. I'm now based in Seoul, South Korea, and I can't wait to share all the things I've learned living and working in the industry with you. This podcast is brought to you by Style Story for your dose of all things K-beauty. Want to shop the hottest trending K-beauty products? Head over to www.stylestory.com.au. So today for our full first out... (laughs) So today for our first full-length episode, I want to explore a topic that is perhaps slightly controversial, and that is why the 10-step Korean beauty routine is a lie. So I know that's a pretty bold statement because when most people are first introduced to the Korean beauty routine, to the Korean beauty, I guess, philosophy, one of the first things that nearly everyone talks about in the media, on blogs and things like that is the 10-step routine. You know that there's 10 steps or potentially even more. I've seen up to, I think up to 16 different steps in some various routines. And while it is true that there are certainly the products available in Korean beauty in general to do 10, 12, 14, 16, basically as many steps as you like, take your pick. The idea of this 10-step Korean skincare routine was actually coined by an American marketer, which means it's not a thing that Koreans themselves are necessarily even familiar with. So I obviously living here and, you know, talking with lots of Koreans, you will never hear someone say, oh gosh, got to run home and do my 10 steps of skincare. You know, let me just count them all out. One, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 10. Like that's just not a thing. So while it is true that I guess a typical Korean skincare routine certainly contains many more steps than say a Western one, it's not true to say that there are 10 steps and that if you're not doing 10 steps, that's not K-beauty. You know, like I think... One of the reasons I wanted to talk to you guys about this today, especially is because, you know, as someone that's been working in this industry um, and, you know, I obviously love K-beauty, I think it makes me a little bit um, scared for one when I see people that are, you know, wanting to introduce 10 new products to their skin at one time. That's never a good idea. And I'm going to go into a few of the common beginner K-beauty mistakes that I see people make in a future episode next week. So I'll leave sort of the nuts and bolts of that until a little bit later. But I guess there's several things that I see wrong with the promotion of, you know, the 10-step Korean beauty routine. The first being that it's actually a fallacy. Like, yes, there are that many products and if you want to do them, you can. But it's certainly not set in stone. It's not like a rule. Um, It's not a thing that Koreans themselves talk about. And I think the bigger problem with the idea of this 10-step routine is that it can put a lot of people off starting um, because they don't know where to start or they don't know what to do and they get really, really confused and, oh, my God, it's just too much. So I guess it's – I see – I see problems with it from that perspective as well, that, you know, I don't think it's great to be putting off people that would otherwise be interested in getting into K-beauty, but they think, you know, oh, that's just crazy. Who's got time for 10 steps? Like, that's not for me. Um, That's a real shame, I guess, from my perspective as someone that has discovered these products and really loves them. I want to sing their praises from the rooftops and I want other people to discover them too. So if that this idea of having to use, you know, all these products is off-putting to people, that's a real shame. Um, And yeah, I just don't think it gets to the essence of what the Korean beauty routine or what Korean skincare, the philosophy behind it actually is. Um, So, I mean, the other thing is this, 
when I first discovered Korean beauty, which was, you know, nearly 10 years ago, there was a big difference in the amount of steps that I saw Koreans using in their skincare routines as opposed to Westerners. Uh, that was true. Like, you know, most Westerners and certainly me when I was growing up, we did, uh, you know, a cleanser, a toner and a moisturizer. And if we were lucky, sunscreen, <laughs> like it didn't get much more complicated than that. Like the whole idea even of a serum, certainly when I was sort of growing up, was just not a thing that I knew about. You know, maybe um, a spot treatment cream or something like that if you had acne. But it was very pared down. It was very basic. Um, as a philosophy in Western skincare, I guess we certainly don't um, prioritize skincare from a young age. Uh, and to the extent that we talk about skincare, I guess uh, the philosophy is usually about scrubbing, exfoliating and doing everything we can to sort of get rid of the dead skin cells to find the new ones that are hiding beneath, you know, fresh skin, all of that sort of thing. So that was certainly um, having grown up in Australia in the, I guess, 90s and 2000s. That was my introduction to skincare. It was that, you know, it was just another chore like brushing your teeth. It wasn't, you know, a ritual or anything like that. So I think that is certainly changing. Um, you know, I mean, it's a lot more common for people to have a lot more steps in their routine. Even people that are sort of espousing, you know, a beauty, Australian beauty as this, I guess, pared down form of a skincare routine. I know Zoe Foster Blake likes comparing, you know, her her go-to skincare to, you know, K-Beauty. But then if you take a look at what her products actually involve, basically she's got all the steps of a typical Korean beauty routine there. You know, she's got the double cleanse, she's got the pads, she's got a serum, she's got sheet masks. So I don't think that there is... I guess, as big a distinction between Western and Korean beauty, certainly today, circa 2020, as there was when I first discovered Korean beauty back in, say, 2011. But there are, I guess, there's a philosophical difference in the way that Korean people approach their skincare, and that is that they're taught to take care of their skin from a very young age. It's just another part of, I guess, you know, their self-care. Um you know, spa culture is really big over here. And by that, I mean, like sort of going to the sauna, communal bathing, all of that sort of thing. So there's a whole culture that exists in Korea around beauty um, and taking care of yourself and your skin that doesn't really exist, certainly where I'm from in Australia. Um, You know, the idea of going for a sauna together with your mom and your grandma and, you know, close friends and things like that, that doesn't exist. Um, So I, I suppose they have had a very different approach to that sort of thing from a very young age and were taught to look after their skin obviously um it is highly prized in korea to have very fair skin and that's not a preference for white skin per se as in white like i'm white that's a preference that is linked to um korea's cultural heritage which is that uh ladies that had a lot of wealth that were affluent didn't need to work outside in the fields, therefore their skin was naturally lighter in color. So it was a symbol of wealth and prosperity to have lighter colored skin, fairer colored skin. Um, And that's just to be contrasted, I guess, to the Western approach, which is we think of a tan as a great thing because it's a sign of someone that also has a lot of time on their hands, right? If you've got a tan, you've got time to go on holidays, take the sun in, you know, getting bronzed and things like that. That's just our preference in Western culture because it shows a different form of affluence, which is a person with time on their hands, a person that has, you know, enough time to go on holidays and get brown and, you know, lucky you. So, Um, I guess that's another focus for them. So Koreans really like to focus on products that have, um, I guess, ingredients in them that help smooth out the skin, lighten pigmentation, get rid of dark spots, anything basically that makes the skin look uneven. So there's a real focus in Korean beauty beauty on what they call whitening but what the correct term i would suggest in um, english in the english language would be brightening for a brighter complexion a smoother more even complexion no matter what color you are literally no matter what color you are you want your skin tone to be all one tone rather than pigmented with you know dark spots and things like that which is what happens when you go in the sun um so i think there's That's the key differences that I see, I suppose, between um, a Korean and a Western approach to skincare. And it doesn't, as you can see, really have anything to do with, okay, this step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, rah, 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 rah. So I think 
Korean skincare, to me, that's the main difference. So if you're thinking about starting a Korean skincare routine and sort of don't know where to start, obviously there are lots of different places you can start. So if you are interested to know more about some of the key steps or key products that you will find in a typical routine, and this is not to say that you need to do all of these steps, certainly that's not the case. But if you're looking for, I guess, an overview of what steps you might want to incorporate into your routine, a typical Korean beauty routine will start with a two-step cleanse. Um, And this is obviously at night after a full day out wearing SPF sunscreen, which all Koreans religiously wear sunscreen and many Korean women also wear makeup. So in order to get that off, there's two steps of cleansing involved. The first step is the oil cleanser. Now, the oil cleanser is designed so that you avoid harshly scrubbing your face to get off your makeup. um, And this instead dissolves the SPF and I guess the components in your makeup as well. So an oil-based cleanser, and that can be either a cleansing oil, or a lot of you might have seen if you have been introduced to any Korean beauty products, cleansing balms are another really popular form of oil cleanser. And that's essentially a product that goes on as a solid balm. And then when it touches your skin, it melts into this beautiful oil that sort of very cleanly, gently takes your makeup off and dissolves it. However, anyone that's used an oil cleanser before will know that often after you finish cleansing, there'll still be a little bit of residue of something on your face, either the cleanser itself, perhaps a bit of sunscreen, a bit of makeup. So the Koreans go in with a second step of cleansing, and this is typically a foam cleanser. And the reason that we do that in K-Beauty is literally just to get rid of any leftover product on your face. Because before you start your treatment steps and the skincare steps, you need to start with a clean base. You don't want anything left over that could potentially clog your pores. So that's that's the philosophy behind doing a, a two-step cleanse. Um, the Koreans aren't the only ones that do it, but certainly that is a very, very popular part of a typical Korean beauty routine for most Koreans that I know. Um, Now, as for people, some people prefer to do that again in the morning when they wake up. Some people don't cleanse at all. We'll get into sort of all of that later, but this is for a typical night routine. So when you get home um, at night. After that, so the next step that you will frequently see referred to if you're, you know, looking at one of those guides on the 10 step routine is your exfoliator. Now, again, this is why I find the whole philosophy of a 10-step routine slightly misleading. Exfoliator is not a product that you would use every single night, guys. That's not a great idea. I would recommend keeping your exfoliation to once or twice a week. I think that's plenty. Um, And exfoliators are great for clearing out, obviously, dead skin, promoting cell turnover. Um, Very useful products to have in your routine, but you don't need to be doing it every night. So if you're trying to do 10 steps every night, this is not one that you want to be doing every night. Um, And the other caution that I would suggest is, particularly if you are using a manual exfoliator, try not to scrub too hard on the face. We don't actually want to take off like a layer of skin. Just it's a light buff and polish. If you think of it like that, like you were, I I don't know, buffing your car or something, that's about the level that you want to be exfoliating. You're not actually trying to scrub the skin off yourself. Um, So that would be, I guess, step three then in, in in a typical Korean routine. Yeah, the next step is toner. And toner is a good product to use every day, I guess, no matter what kind of routine that you're following. Uh, And that's because a good toner will help to actually reset your skin's pH balance. And this helps the skin to, you know, prep it to properly absorb the next layers that you're actually going to apply in your skincare. So I don't know about you guys, but I know that I certainly, when I first discovered Korean beauty had a bit of a um, hang up about you know toner because I was thinking of the stuff that I used to put on my skin when I was in my teens and that stuff is toxic man like it was really really it stung the skin it was very alcoholic like you could usually smell the alcohol coming off it and you know the idea was throw it on so that you will dry out all your acne spots and as a teen with you know breakouts and stuff like that it's like yes that's exactly what I need to do but Korean toners are different Um, I would say that the major part of the toners that I see are hydrating toners 
And that's because they're not supposed to be another step in your cleansing routine. They're actually supposed to be the first step of your treatment. So the skin treatment um, that Koreans put on after cleansing. So if you still have, if you're using a toner and say you've got a cotton pad or something like that, and you're finding makeup or something on the bottom of your pad that means you actually haven't cleansed properly so don't leave it to the toning step to sort of be cleaning up after your cleanser this is actually supposed to be putting some hydration back into the skin so a lot of the popular brands that you'll see in korean beauty actually do have quite a thicker texture certainly than the toners i remember using um, when i was growing up and that's why so if you come across a toner that is slightly thicker than what you were expecting Think of it more as a treatment step. It's not a uh, a cleansing step, basically. So another, the next step, step five, if you were following along, is uh, a face mask, or or, sorry, um, an essence. So the essence is the next step that you would come across in the Korean beauty routine. Now, it can be a little bit uh, confusing, I guess, when you first come across this product, if you've never seen it before, what exactly is it? What is it supposed to do? So Essences are highly concentrated products and they're designed to target specific skin issues. A lot of them will target the skin on a cellular level, so they're designed to promote cell renewal. Um, And they can do everything. Basically, essences are as varied as the skin types are. Some make the skin softer and firmer. Some make it, you know, more toned. Some make it more hydrated. Some are for anti-aging. Basically, the key is just to pick one that's for your skin type that is designed to treat the skincare issues that you have um, and you can apply it onto your skin. So this is a really common one in Korean skincare. Most Koreans will use an essence. But again, if you're starting out, you might decide that's not a step that you really need to start with because you know slow and steady wins the race so that is step five but again this is all very optional so then there can be a little bit of debate over what steps come next Um, some people advocate that step six I guess should be serum and that the face mask should come after that I personally think that depending on how thick the serum in question is the serum should probably come after you sheet mask if you sheet mask and not everyone sheet masks um most korean sheet masks are certainly designed to be used every day they're gentle enough to be used every day but again like this is all depending on your skin your daily you know i guess how much time you have up your sleeve to do a sheet mask. I know sheet masking was really, really popular in K-Beauty, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a trend on Instagram to do a pack a day. And that is because Koreans refer to sheet masks as a pack. So one sheet mask a day as opposed to a pack of ciggies, I guess. Um, And this is, again, it's so, so varied. I've asked lots of different people. Some people religiously sheet mask every single day. One of the girls in our soul office, her mother, who has the most beautiful like hydrated skin. I've never seen a hydration reading so high when we tested her skin out. Um, She religiously sheet masks every single day. Me personally, I tend to sheet mask when I need it, when my skin is lacking in hydration, when it's dull, when I've got something coming up that I need my makeup to sit on properly. Other people, you know, two or three times a week, that's sort of their happy medium, I guess, for sheet masking. So, you know, you do you. If you want to do it every single night, go for gold. If you don't, um, that's, you know, totally up to you. <laughs> totally fine. I don't think anything bad is going to happen to your skin if you don't sheet mask every night. So then serum, depending on where you're applying it in your routine. Again, this is just another, usually thicker than an essence in texture, highly concentrated, more so than your moisturizer. That's why people apply um, uh, a serum or an ampoule. It's because it's designed to treat specific skin issues. I myself usually tend to load up on different serums. I like to layer different serums in my skincare routine. So I might use, um, you know, a propolis one for brightening. Then I might use um, a tea tree one to deal with any redness and inflammation. So you can just sort of make up your own cocktail of serums. And this is, I guess, another reason why the whole idea of 10 steps is a little bit misleading because, you know, like 10 steps of what? (laughs) You know, if you're doing two or three serums, then that's going to put you up above 10 steps if you're also doing all these other things. So 
I guess my whole point in, in, in bringing this up is just to get you guys away from the thinking that you have to have 10 steps and that there's a certain steps, a set of steps that you need. That is, it just, in my opinion, it, is going to lead you down the wrong path um and that's not what k-beauty is really about i guess that's the the point of having this conversation with you guys so i mean there are heaps of other steps that you can add in between things like an emulsion which is like a lighter form of a moisturizer i guess Um, and depending on where you do your facial oil in your routine some people like to add it in here other people like to apply it after they've done their moisturizer So then I guess step 10, if we're following along steps, um, (laughs) then it would be, I guess, an eye cream. Again, if you use an eye cream, which not everyone does. So eye creams obviously are designed to prevent eye bags, dark circles and puffiness, and they treat and hydrate the, I guess, skin underneath the eye. So the skin underneath the eye, certainly in my case, and I know in most of yours, is a lot more delicate and thinner than the rest of your face. So the idea is to use a thicker cream here with slightly more uh, targeted ingredients to help treat that area. And certainly I know the eye creams that I use, I wouldn't apply all over my face. I know some people say eye cream and moisturizer are, you know, um, the same thing and why bother using an eye cream. I personally, the ones that I use, I would not apply all all over my face. They're just too thick. They're too rich. Um, So again, take your pick. Now, moisturizer. So moisturizer there's a couple of different types that you can use you can use a day cream you couldn't use a night cream some people just you know use uh the same moisturizer for day and night (laughs) i fall into that camp certainly and then the next step after that would be a sleeping mask so sleeping masks are supposed to be thicker versions of your moisturizer um, and they're designed to be left on while you sleep and then you wash them off in the morning so i am a massive fan of sleeping masks i would probably use one about two or three times a week and you know, who doesn't want to wake up to beautifully soft skin the next morning? That's exactly what they're designed to do. And I find them a real hydration boost. They are designed to make this most of your skin's natural repair cycle while you're sleeping. Um, So I guess that's the philosophy behind the sleeping mask. And then the last step, so we would be up to like step 13 now if anyone's counting steps, (laughs) is sunscreen. And this is obviously one that you do in the morning, not at nine and sunscreen definitely is a must for everyone whether you're korean and prefer you know more even toned skin or you're australian and you live in a country that has a hole in the ozone layer sunscreen definitely is for everybody there is no better anti-aging cream that you can apply than your sunscreen so make sure that you're using a special purpose sunscreen don't rely on the sunscreen in your makeup because the amount that you would need to apply of makeup to get the stated protection is just like no one would wear that much makeup so yeah that would be my advice to you guys so i hope this was useful um you know i'm not trying to rubbish um you know the idea of the 10 step skincare routine i guess it it serves a purpose in illustrating that there are big differences between korean beauty and western beauty in some respects But if this has put you off from starting your K-beauty routine, the idea that there are 10 steps and, oh, God, where do I even start? Um, I guess just a little bit of reassurance that there are no Koreans out there counting all of the products in their beauty cabinets and going, okay, step one, step two, step three. That's not a real thing. Basically, the best routine for you will be the one that gives you the results that you need in your skin and you know there are times in the year when you may need more products than you you did in other than compared to other seasons for example winter that's a great time to maybe up the amount of you know products that you're applying on your face because the skin's dry it's flaky it's a bit more sensitized from being out in the cold you know it makes sense you might need a few extra layers um, of skincare to help plump the skin up and keep it looking keep it looking in good condition but in summer when it's super hot and you basically are sweating off your makeup you know it, it might not make sense to load up on the same amount of products so this was, I guess, the point of having this conversation with you guys is just to let you know that you don't need to be scared of KBD. Um, if the steps are putting you off, don't let that be an excuse. Um, you can totally tailor the routine to suit yourself. And I would definitely suggest doing that rather than slavishly following, you know, some sort of 
routine that you've seen on the internet. Um, however, if you do want to do t- 10 steps, you know, power to you. Um, good. Like do you do you. Skincare should not be about, you know, be, it being a chore or should not be about, you know, you have to do this or else. Like that's totally not the point. So if you enjoyed today's podcast, I would love it if you could upload a photo of yourself listening and tag tag us at Style Story under K Beauty underscore K Beauty rather at Style Story underscore K Beauty um, so that we can share it. I would love to know if you're listening, where you're listening, who you're listening with. So yeah, send a photo and um, I will love to talk to you next week. All right, bye guys. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you've made it this far, hopefully that means you've liked it. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss future episodes. Don't forget to leave me a rating and a review while you're there. And if you want to say hi, head on over to Instagram at lauren.kbeauty and leave me a DM. Until next time.